highest spiritual attainment is not when we wake up, but when consciousness wakes up to itself. Even to call this an attainment is ridiculous, really. Samadhi is the experience of this, when the, the dream dissolves, when the dream disappears, the dream of a person, the dream of a world, the dream of the whole thing just dissolves, and what's left is consciousness realizing itself as the only thing that exists. Consciousness realizes itself as all that is, all that has ever been, and realizes that that lost in a dream of a world and a person and all that, it, it has, it forgot itself, if we can call it forgetting. It was so involved in this character, all the characters, that it was not aware of itself and that the whole thing is a dream of consciousness, the whole of creation, if you will, the whole of existence is a dream of consciousness. So when consciousness wakes up, when it remembers, when it realizes itself again, this is what we call awakening. This is why the person cannot wake up because the person is, is a dream in consciousness. This person here, Peter, is a dream in consciousness. Consciousness wakes up to itself and realizes that this dream character of Peter never existed really. It was just a dream. And the world that Peter perceives is, is Peter's dream, is a dream within a dream. And when Peter has a sleeping dream, that's a dream within a dream within a dream. But the sleeping dream points to the truth of, of reality. It points very clearly to the truth of reality because everything in that sleeping dream is like consciousness's dream. In our sleeping dream, we're lost in the character in the dream. We believe that that character in the dream is real. I am being chased by a monster. I am on top of Mount Everest. I am a mountain climber. I am the king. I am whatever. I am whatever the dream seems to, to present and, and appears to be. I am whatever that character appears to be. And I'm having those experiences. I'm appearing to have those experiences. And it all seems completely real, doesn't it? All of us dream at night. All of us have sleeping dreams. We may not remember the dream from last night, but we remember at some point we have remembered dreams and they all are similar. We all believe them. We all believe the character in the dream is real while we're dreaming. It all seems real. If it didn't seem real at all, it wouldn't be a dream. We, we wouldn't be involved in it. So we believe it's real and, and we experience those, ex those dream experiences as if they were real experiences. And we don't realize this until we wake up in the morning and realize that it was all a dream. The whole thing was a dream. Unconsciousness does something similar to that. This dream this longer dream, which may in this case is 71 years long, it's a, in relative terms, it's fairly long. It's all a dream. This character of Peter is a dream. The experiences Peter's had throughout this dream life are a dream. It's all been a dream of consciousness. 
And it's not until we experience samadhi, it's not until we experience consciousness awakening to itself, realizing itself, that we realize that this is a dream, that this character of I, me, mine is a dream of consciousness. It's a wonderful thing to realize this. So what happens then, samadhi, the world and the person and all this disappears. There's just consciousness realizing itself everywhere in everything as consciousness itself. But we do come back into the dream again, but in a different way. After this awakening, consciousness enters the dream in a different way back into the character of Peter or Mary or Sue or Joe or whoever it is, consciousness enters the dream back into that character, except now it's a lucid dream because consciousness now is awake to what consciousness is. And it realizes that everything in this dream is just consciousness, but it appears to be different people, different things, a world, and a person. It appears to be all of this, a universe, a cosmos. It appears to be all of this. And it, and it can perceive through the eyes of this character, just as it did before. It perceives the world through the eyes of this character. And in some ways it acts in, in a way that this character acted and, and, you know, does those, those things, except it's a lucid dream now. So if you've ever had a lucid dream when you're sleeping, you understand this, that, that you're, you're dreaming, but you're aware that you're dreaming. That's the difference. You're dreaming, but you're aware that you're dreaming. How scary is the monster when you know it's just a dream monster and you're dreaming? It's not very upsetting, really. It's just the movie. It's just a dream. And likewise, you can change the dream because it's a dream. You change your thoughts, the dream changes. The monster becomes your friend or, or just disappears, whatever, because you have some more control of it because you know it's just a dream. You're not a victim of the dream. You're, you're having some control of it because you know it's a dream. And likewise, in, in this waking dream, you can do the same, something similar. Because you know it's a dream, there's a great sense of, of peace, a great sense of, of contentment, bliss, love because you know it's all consciousness, that everything you see are not really different people, but consciousness itself, manifesting, appearing as different people. And that experience of the realization of that is love. You cannot help but love consciousness. Consciousness cannot help but love itself. It cannot help that, but that. So everything you perceive, everything you see, you experience as love is very different than when you were believing the dream. When you believe the dream, then some people were good, some people were bad, some things were good, some things were bad. You wanted some things, you didn't want other things. You know, you didn't like mosquitoes because they would bite your body and it would itch. But when you see through the eyes of consciousness in the dream, then it's all consciousness and everything you see with love. Mosquitoes, itching, body, other bodies. It's all consciousness. And so you see everything with love. There's no separation. This is what non-duality means. Everything is consciousness. There is no self and other. There is no other. There is just this self everywhere in everything.
And that's a lucid dream. That's a lucid dream in the waking dream. Dreams come and go. Things are changing in the dream. And this character can still have certain things that it prefers or not prefers, but more and more it acts in alignment with consciousness itself because its consciousness is having this dream. So more and more the different personality traits and needs and things of this character sort of fade away and it becomes much more like consciousness itself in that it loves whatever it sees, whatever it experiences, it experiences it with a feeling of love and non-separation, seeing also that all of this is consciousness and that it itself is consciousness, not a person not who it thinks it is. And there's enormous freedom in this and bliss in this and peace in this and love in this. So the first stage of this is, is to wake up when consciousness wakes up to itself when the person and the world and all that the person perceives as a world is let go. And there's just consciousness and consciousness realizes itself. This is, this is awakening. This is the awakening. And then the next stage is, is re-entering the dream, but as a lucid dream, knowing that it's consciousness having a dream, perceiving through this particular character and all characters. That's why w when this happens, this character is able to open to consciousness so it can experience what all the other characters are experiencing as well. It can experience the other thoughts of the other characters, the other feelings of the other characters. If it, if it acts in a healing capacity, it can feel the pain and what needs healing as if it is in this body and, and he, help them heal with that because there is no separation. It's all just consciousness. And yet these dreams in the waking life, as well as the sleeping life, seem very real to people before they wake up to, to their nature, their true nature as consciousness. It seems completely, completely real. And that is absolutely understood and respected and honored. So if somebody's feeling that they are this person and that they are suffering, then our heart is is totally goes out to them and we do everything we can to help them as consciousness as consciousness is very compassionate and loving because in that other dream character that feels like it's suffering that believes that it is that dream character and believes that it is suffering and it's totally real to them that too is just consciousness so consciousness loves that and wants to help and does everything it can to help, always. It respects the dream and the belief in the dream of all the other dreamers, all the other, all consciousness appearing in all these different appearances and manifestations. What else could it do? And if it can, it helps the process of awakening happen in these different dream characters, these different appearances. Because that's all the true end of suffering. There is no end of suffering other than fully awakening to consciousness, consciousness awakening to itself.
there will always be suffering until that. And the closer we get to that, the less suffering there is. The more we let go of the attachment and belief in, in this self, in this person, in this world, with all its needs and desires and dissatisfaction, the more we let go of that, the happier we are, the more at peace, the more loving we are the better life feels, the more we let go. It's not until we let go of the whole thing completely that we experience samadhi, that consciousness experiences itself and realizes itself. But every step along the way of letting go brings increased happiness, increased love, increased peace, increased freedom. And this is the inner guidance that shows us that, that we're on the right path, that this is good. We're doing the right thing. Suffering and can bring us, can, is extremely helpful to helping us wake up from the dream, to helping us be free of suffering. Suffering is really the primary way to be free of suffering, is to open to suffering and learn from it, realize what it's showing us. And the more we let go, that the more we let go of this dream and this dream character, the less suffering there is, the more healing there is. So in this dream itself, this waking dream, there's, there's incredible, wonderful guidelines all the way through. It's just that most of us don't see it. We want to get rid of suffering, not learn from it. We want it to go away and as soon as we can be free of it. Instead of opening to it and saying, what are you, why, what are you here to teach me? Because that's what it's here for. And not just suffering, but everything is showing us the cracks in the dream, is showing us the, the illusion of the dream. Everything is showing us this. Everything is helping us wake up. If we pay attention, if we simply pay attention. And what's really paying attention? This character in the dream has free will. It doesn't have to you know, it's not real, it's just consciousness, but it goes through the world and is conditioned and all the things that happen to it to create its life and what it is. And for some of us, some of those things help us to, to let go. And consciousness can experience itself. God can experience itself. Maybe you. Maybe in this dream, the character can let go enough for consciousness to realize itself. And that's a wonderful thing because everything is directing us towards this. This is the evolution of humankind to realize its true nature, to realize itself. Everything in life is pointing us to this and has been throughout our entire life. And it's because of the conditioning, it's very hard for us to, to realize this, to open to it and to pay attention and to be free of conditioning enough to learn from this. But some of us do. Perhaps you. Perhaps you. Thank you, my friend. Mm. May you wake up to your true nature to the true nature of all existence. May consciousness wake up to itself in this character. <laughs>